Hi everyone, Anthony Morganti here. Recently I was watching a video on photography. In that video, they were talking about how photography was becoming more popular and a bit more mainstream in the mid to late 19th century, and how they wanted to print images in the newspaper of the day. Unfortunately, the printing presses in the mid to late 1800s weren't able to reproduce the continuous tones found in a photograph. So they had to come up with a way to be able to print an image in a newspaper. And what they came up with was something called half tone. What they do is they convert the image to a series of black dots. And where the image is darker, the black dots are larger. And where the image is lighter, the black dots are smaller. And this was really an ingenious way to be able to print an image in a newspaper in the mid to late 1800s. So all those images of like Abraham Lincoln that were in a newspaper or of the American Civil War, those were all halftone images. Now, of course, the printing presses today, uh, they're able to reproduce the continuous tones found in a photograph. They could even do color photographs as well. So half toning really isn't done in the newspaper industry any longer, but it is still popular in the art world, specifically pop art. You probably saw some work of Andy Warhol. He was pretty famous for using half tones in his art. There's also a more contemporary artist, David Studwell, that has uh, half tone images of movie stars. Here's an image of James Dean. You see this a color image, but you can see that there are dots and where it's darker, the dots are larger, and where it's lighter, the dots are smaller. And this is something that you actually could do in Photoshop. Now, I'm not sure if David Studwell does it in Photoshop or if he does it by hand. I'm not sure of his method. But if you ever want to create a halftone look, you could do it in Photoshop. There are actually two different ways to do it. There's one method for black and white images and a different method for color images. And I'm going to show you both methods in this video. We're going to start out with a black and white image. This is an image that I edited in Lightroom. It was a raw file. I edited it and I converted it to black and white and I sent it to Photoshop. Now I'm ready to apply this halftone look to this image. To do that, I need to go up to image mode and I want to use bitmap, but you can see bitmap is grayed out. That's because this started out life as a color image. And just because I converted it to black and white, in Lightroom doesn't mean it's still not a color image technically. So I need to convert it to a grayscale image. And I could do that right here from the same menu. Just click on grayscale. You see when I do that, it's going to come up with this warning. Do you want to get rid of all the color information? Yeah, discard the color information and you'll see nothing's changed. It's a grayscale image now. Now go up to image mode. You'll see bitmap is still grayed out. That's because this image started out as a raw file. It was a 16-bit file. In order to use the bitmap option, it needs to be an 8-bit file. So from the same menu, just go to 8 bits per channel. And you can see it doesn't look any different, but it is, it is now a grayscale 8-bit file. Now, when I go up to image, down to mode, you'll see bitmap is active. Click on that and you'll get the bitmap dialog box. Now, the output by default will be the same as the input. Uh, this is a 240 pixels per inch uh, raw file, basically. What I recommend you do is don't go lower than 240. So if you happen to put an image in here and it's like 100 or something, put 240 here. A lot of people put 300. 300 tends to give it a little smoother of a look. Um, if you go higher than 300, you won't see a difference. I tried using 600, 900, 1000 it looked the exact same as 300, although there was a difference between 240 and 300. So experiment here. I'm going to use 300 for this demonstration. Now the method, we want to go to this drop down and change it to half tone screen and then click OK. Next, you'll get this half tone screen dialog box and the default setting is a frequency of 53. The frequency is actually the size of the dots. The higher the number, the smaller the dot. Now, you may think, well, I want really small dots. Well, if you do, it's going to greatly increase the contrast. So if you put something super high in here, like 1000, you'll get an image that's going to be mostly just black and white. It's going to be super like contrasty. 
If you go lower, the dots will get bigger and it may look more arty. It's you know hard to say. Uh, the angle is the angle to the dots to one another. I've always left that at the default setting of 45. Now the shape it, by default's diamond. If you want to kind of reproduce the newsprint look, you're probably going to want to change that to round. Let's use the default frequency of 53 and just see what it looks like. And we'll click OK. Now you could see what it looks like. Let me zoom in by hitting Command Plus a couple times on Mac, Control Plus on a PC. And you could see that there's circles. They're not necessarily perfectly round. They almost look like puzzle pieces here. But this is what you get with Photoshop. Now, again, you could like mess around a little bit and try different numbers. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to undo this by hitting Command Z on my computer. Z is in Zebra, Control Z on a Mac. By the way, I have a downloadable PDF that you could print at home of all the keyboard shortcuts found in Photoshop. I'll have a link to that in the description below this video. It's uh, free, so you can download it from my website. So I undid that. Let's again go up to Image, Mode, Bitmap, and we're going to stay with the 300 halftone screen. Click OK, and this time I want the the round you know, circles to be larger. So I need to put a smaller number here. So I'm going to put 25. Let's try that and click OK. Now, it, you know, it's got a, a, a unique look, I guess you could say. Let's zoom in a couple times. You could see now that we have these larger um, white circles. And you can see that where it's lighter, um, they're larger. And where it's darker, they're smaller. So that is how you would go about doing this for a black and white image. Again, you have to experiment. You could try different numbers in there. Uh, if you don't want the resolution at 300, try 240. You're probably doing this for an art look. So there's really no hard and fast rules. I mentioned maybe you wouldn't want to go below 240, but maybe for a specific look, you may want to. So give it a try and see what it looks like. Now, if you have a color image, though, the method is totally different. So I'm going to start out with this color image. Then we're going to go to this color image and try to do an actual work of art. All right. So I have this image. Again, this is like, you know, uh, raw file that I edited in Lightroom and I brought into Photoshop. Now to do it to a color image, what you need to do is go up to filter, down to pixelate, and then color halftone. And you'll get this color halftone dialog box. And these are the default settings. Uh, the maximum radius. Now before when we hit the frequency, I said the larger the number, the smaller the dot. This is opposite. The larger the number, the bigger the dot. So eight will give you a specific size dot. If you go to, let's say 16, the dot will be bigger. 24 will be bigger still and so on. Now the chan the screen angles, these are the relations of the dots to one another. Let's just try it with these default settings and see what it looks like. So we'll click OK. And you can see this is our halftone color image. I'll zoom in hitting Command Plus a couple times. You can see there's the circles, and that's what it looks like. Now, I've messed around with this quite a bit. I'm going to undo this by hitting Command Z on my Mac again. Um, what I found is there's some settings that I think work better uh, than those default settings. So I'm going to give them to you now, and I'll have these listed in the description below this video as well, so you don't have to worry about writing these down. Let's go to Filter, and let's go to Pixelate, and let's go to Color Halftone. Now, radius really will depend on the resolution of your image because the size of the dots remains constant. But if you have an image that's only 1,000 pixels along the long edge, those dots will be a lot bigger looking than an image that has, let's say, the long edge is 6,000 pixels. So this number you could play around with a little bit. For this specific image, I'm going to put in 12. The other numbers, though, um, what I found like seems to look good for me at least is 45 here, 135 here, and 225 here, and 315 here. What I did was is I just separated them each by 90 degrees is what I did. Now, if you mess around with this, you put a lot of numbers in here and you want to go back to the default numbers, hold the command or control key in and you'll notice this cancel button turns into a default button. So you can click on that and we'll put all the default settings back in here. So let's just try this. And I kind of like this look. Now it's really, it's subjective, you know. So we'll zoom in. You can see that we have the circles and the look that you have. 
And I kind of like that. Now let's create a work of art. Now this is not unlike the other two images. This is not an image that I took. This is in Adobe stock photo, but I'm going to do the same thing to this image. So I'm going to go up to filter down to pixelate down to over to color halftone. And it remembered my settings from before and we'll click. Okay. And there is our color halftone image on something like this. So if you're into pop art, this might be something that you want to experiment with, or maybe just, you know, if you're bored on a rainy day, you just want to mess around with something in Photoshop, you could try doing uh, this halftone look to your photographs. Thank you. Everyone who watches my videos, I really do appreciate it. Talk to you guys soon.